on the Word of God, using our faith with an expectation that the things that we ask for, that we will have them. And I'm telling you, we will have everything that we ask for, have asked for, and we're believing for. We will have it, and we'll have it sooner than later. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, Sacramento. Good morning, California. Good morning, church. Good morning, BBOBN Network. Glory to God. Good morning to the people who are the people of God who are full of faith, full of heart, full of love and ready to lay hold of the promises of God. Hallelujah. And move things along in the church for the coming of the Lord. I'm going to say, what's up with you guys? Come on now. Come on now. We got to come into to <laughs> prayer. You say, well, I don't feel like it. Well, use your faith and get up over what you feel, right? <laughs> hey, I just came back from Israel on Sunday. I didn't feel like it at three this morning when my eyes popped open either, but hello. Hello. <laughs> Glory to God. So there are times when we just take hold by faith and we move on with God and watch what he can do. You know, sometimes it really, but prayer tip, prayer tip number 603A. So <laughs> sometimes it's a, you gain um, a place of victory simply by the fact that you move out in faith and overcome how you feel instead of being moved by how you feel. And that is, that's, that, that, of course, applies when you're dealing with things and you're not moved by how you feel. But sometimes how you feel is like, I don't feel like praying. I don't feel like getting up. I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel, I don't feel. But you don't let your feelings lead or direct your prayer life because your feelings will lie to you. They'll keep you, here's what feelings do. Here's what your flesh does. This is not in my notes, but anyway. So here's what your flesh will do. When uh, you comes time to do things in the Lord, you know, you, um, you just want to be busy. You, you want to, uh, you just want to sit down. You don't want to be busy. I, I don't, I don't want to, I got, I, my flesh just wants to sit down when it comes time to do what I'm supposed to do. But then when it comes time to pray, to be quiet before the Lord, your flesh wants to get up and do something. And that's something how it works. So what do you do? You get a hold of that flesh. Whatever part of it you got to get a hold of, you get a hold of it and say, I'm telling you one thing, you're going to do what I'm telling you to do. And I'm telling you, you know, this is powerful either way. You know, I was raised on the end of my mama's finger. Yeah, uh, finger and her left eyebrow, it's powerful. And when, when both of them are at work, just get in line, give it up. So you just give yourself and say, look, we're moving by faith and we're doing this and it really doesn't matter. So get in line, flesh. Just get, either get in line or get behind. But in the name of Jesus, I'm moving on. So I want to, I want to see, I want to hear. And uh, you know, one other thing and another thing. <laughs> so uh, I'll tell you another thing that's important and that's learning to respond. Learning to respond to the things of the Spirit. Learning to respond, first of all, to the Word of God. You can do that when it says it in black and white or red and white, whichever the case may be. You respond to it. But learn to identify the unction of the Holy Spirit and respond to that. Well, how do I do that, Pastor Terry? Well, for one thing, when you've got a leader, whether it's me or somebody else that's leading, learn to respond to that. And the Holy, it empowers the Holy Spirit it, it, it gives him permission, if you will, to move you in line as we talked last night, being in agreement so that we're working together. It's as simple as this. You know, this, this may even sound too simple to you, but a lot of times when we're praying, or if I'm praying, let's say I'm praying with somebody else and I'm, I'm watching them, they're leading, and I'm praying, I'm watching for the witness of the Spirit, and I, every, when they're praying along, I, I mean, I'm working it with them. Amen, amen. 
Amen. Glory to God. I'm about to see good little love. That's right. Amen. I agree with that. I'm working it with them. I'm working my faith. I'm responding, 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 responding. And the more we respond to him, you know what happens? The more he responds to us. And then this, this helps you get you out of a plateau in yeah. prayer. But you learn to respond to him. And uh, don't make him try to uh, have to slap you upside of the head for a response. Okay, now that was the direct way to say what I was going to say today. Now I'll do it the nice way. So as we talked about last night, we're talking about praying in the prophet's ministry and the role. It's important. Uh, you know, I don't want to diminish any other of the fivefold ministry gifts or any other of the gifts that are called. Not all ministry gifts are part of the fivefold, but the fivefold ministry gifts are the ones that carry authority in the church. Okay, and there are other gifts, gifts of healing, gifts of uh, tongues, uh, administrations, helps. They are all gifts of God and they have anointings and they're essential, essential to the body of Christ. But the fivefold ministry gifts are the ones that carry levels of spiritual authority in the church, both for government, but also uh, authority where uh, to speak for God into the church and into circumstances, situations. You staying with me? Are you on the, okay. All right, so the prophet's ministry, those we talked about last night, uh, <clears throat> not every prophet, uh, not every prophet is called uh, to, on a national level, but, but there are some that are. And we see that evidence. It was the, the very first of the ministry gifts that you see in the Old Testament. The prophet's ministry has had some changes on this side of the cross, but there are some things about the prophet's ministry that are remain intact. And that's one of them. And that's the place in the ministry, a prophet's ministry, an anointing that they're responsible before God to speak on a level that affects the nation. Now, some prophets speak out to the nation and the nation, all the nation hears. But on the other hand, when you think about Jeremiah, much of what he said, he said from a prison cell. Who's hearing him? Sometimes nobody. In fact, the Lord told him, he said, I'm sending you to every king on the earth. I'm sending you to every nation and you take the cup of my judgment to every nation. How's he going to do that? That would be impossible to do if he was a free man, much less under the kind of watch and uh, threats against his life. I mean, they kept him in a, a cistern for a long time. So how did he do that? Well, he faithfully did it, but he did it under that anointing and he began to speak and he brought that cup of judgment in the place of his anointing, his prayers, and the words that he spoke. And that judgment, and it's still active today. That cup of judgment comes to every person. Was, and the Bible tells us that cup of judgment is where Israel is concerned. And so we see how that ministry of the prophet, it's, how, it's up to God and how his anointing works. And we don't pick or choose and it's not a, uh, the anointing doesn't operate out of a vending machine, but we find and recognize what God is doing. And then we work with him for that anointing. We work with him for his wisdom. We work with him for his will, his way, and, and believe that we receive that for a desired outcome. Because when we pray according to his will, then we have confidence that we have those things. So we talked about how God's uh, authority and God's word under that authority through a prophet will change atmospheres, it changes situations, and it deals with spiritual darkness. Spiritual darkness. While every believer has a level of authority for their own lives, every believer has levels of authority for the lives over their family. You can even have a measure of authority where your city, your church, your nation, your region, your state, all those are concerned. But none of us individually as believers, apart from some special anointing, have that ability to alter the direction that a city or a nation is going alone because you have the will of so many people involved. Our part is important, but we can't function alone. But a ministry of a prophet 
that authority is elevated to another level and they can deal with things uh, by that anointing. They can deal with things because God wills it to be so. They can deal with spiritual, uh, spiritual wickedness and, and uh, darkness in heavenly places as the scripture says. And they, uh, Jesus told Brother Hagin one time, he said, uh, you leave some of that to me. Well, what does that mean? Jesus is gonna do something? It means that he will equip with an anointing in the ministry gifts or a special anointing to deal with some things that operate on those very high levels. Now, what, what brings about that happening? What brings about that, that release of that, an exercise of that divine authority and power? You know, if a prophet's anointed for that, why didn't he just get up here and take care of business? Because that's not how that works. While that's the calling and the ministry of the prophet, there are other things involved that put him into that place. Sometimes decades of prayer happen before something changes. You think about the Iron Curtain, 70 something years that those people were behind the Iron Curtain praying, 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 praying. So what happened? Why did it take so long? Well, the main reason is they were not praying in a level of faith. They prayed with heart cry. They prayed that believing somehow, some way, sometime God will. But when Brother Hagin's book on the authority of the believer, and they got a million of them behind the Iron Curtain, those people got a hold of it. And in a matter of uh, months, maybe a year or so, that Iron Curtain came undone. Yeah. But now how did it come undone? I remember, and uh, there were probably plenty of others, but as for us, I remember in a Sunday morning service in our church, our, our congregation was really small. And, but on that, that Sunday morning, the anointing came on Brother Copeland and he gave the faith command for that wall to come down. Yeah. He called it down. He, and not only called it down, he said, it's coming down. And he prophesied the end of it. I'm telling you, it was days. It was days. And there were East Germans standing on top of that wall with a hammer and knocking holes in that thing. It was down. It was down. So you see the prayers of the people in faith gave God room to put that ministry office in place and to, to speak and to say what needed to be said. Now, not everything in the prophet's ministry is through prophecy or recognized as prophecy. But in studying Jewish commentary on the prophets, I love it. It's given me so much insight because they study that so well but it's also what they teach. And it's not just what they teach, but the anointing that's on the teaching when they teach it. It goes out beyond just a Bible lesson to you or to me. You know, the other, one of the other ministry gifts, a teacher can come and teach that exact same thing and you will be blessed. And in some ways, maybe have takeaways that more clear to you than if you had heard it through the ministry of a prophet. So what is the difference? The difference is the level of equipping, not only for you, but the change that it makes in the atmosphere, the change that it makes in situations, the changes that it makes in politics and a culture and a society and the way that it shifts things. I remember back here actually in California some years ago, back in about I don't know, 1983, and the Lord told my dad, he said, I want you to have Vietnam veterans stand up and tell them, welcome home, soldier, job well done. Yeah. Well, okay, I mean, that was at a time when that, they had not been received well. And a lot of Vietnam vets were suffering. And it, there was a spiritual atmosphere about that. And so they were, they were harassed and persecuted and spit on and called horrible names. Well, I mean, these are tough guys. You would think that that wouldn't bother them, but when there's demons attached to that, it gets into the minds and the souls of people, and it was getting into the mind and the soul of this nation. So dad didn't think anything about it. He just decided to do it for those men and women that came to our meetings, and he'd have people stand up. Sometimes you might have a dozen or more in a congregation, and he'd, we had testimonies of people that were set free from... from um, uh, PTSD and nightmares and the shakes and addictions and set free just because minister of the Lord had them stand up and people stood up and cheered them. It broke the power of that. Well, praise God for that. But you know, uh, 
especially back in 1983, our, our, even our media audience wasn't that large. But here's what happened. Not long after that, we started to see a turn in the nation. And all of a sudden, Hollywood's cranking out movies that were compassionate towards the Vietnam vet and began to reveal what those men had gone through in combat. And there, there's a mobile memorial that traveled across the United States and people began to support it. And then the, the wall went up, the, the uh, Vietnam Memorial Wall. And all of a sudden, the power of that thing just like dew in a hot sun, it just went away. It just went away. Do you remember that? But see, all of that went to an altered and changed things. Was he the only one saying that? I don't know. I know there were other people praying. Other people were saying things, but the voice of a prophet under that kind of anointing can change things. You may never know who or where. You may, you may never put the two together. It's not important. But the important thing for all of us to do is to pray towards a desired outcome and end and we do it with faith, believing that even in this meeting, whether it's the teaching, the preaching, the ministry, the music, the prophecies, whatever it is, that all of it is designed by God, being used by God to alter and change things ultimately in this nation. Beginning with you, your family, your church, your city, your state, and this nation, and ultimately the impact that it has on the world. Do I get a witness with that? Now this place of prayer, we'll pray here shortly, and this place of prayer, this place of prayer, it says the heart, the, the earnest heartfelt prayer of a righteous man avails much. It's, it's, it's not just making a prayer. It's not just saying a prayer, but when we have people on our heart. So we're not just praying for Brother Copeland. Bible says when Paul talked to Timothy, he said, I, I exhort you first of all, you know what he doesn't say? Is it, he didn't say, I exhort you first of all to pray for kings and those in authority. You probably thought it said that, but it doesn't. It says, I exhort you that first of all, on behalf of all men, you pray for kings and those are in authority. Ah, so all of a sudden we're not just singled up on a king, a president, a leader, a governor, or, or a pastor. We're not just singled up on praying for that person, but we're coming to the courts of heaven saying, look, because of all this, you got to do something with this. Because of all this, Lord, because of our heart, because of your heart, and we connect with the heart of God and his passion for people. It is not, it is, it is not the will of God that California's streets or anywhere else be full of homeless, hurting, drug addicts, and, and miserable people. It is not the will of God that divorce rates be through the roof. It is not the will of God that people, that people celebrate killing babies. It is not the will of God that even one should perish. It's not the will of God. And it's so much not the will of God. We have to look at his great passion, his great will, which is that all men be saved and come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ and understand he's a mediator between God and man, that all men would repent and come to life, eternal life through Jesus. And that his heart, his heart, his heart is so full of each and every person. They're, they're in him. He, he longs for them. Yeah. And when we take up that place of longing and prayer for, for the people with, with a um, specifically saying, okay, Lord, we're asking for this ministry of the prophet. We're asking for that anointing. We're expecting it in this meeting. We're expecting, Lord, that, that by the Spirit, there's a delivered outcome. Why? Because those people are dying in the streets. And because a nation, a city, a state, and a nation are facing judgments of sin because of this, the, the, the abominable things that people are lining up with. It's abominable. Abominable. Murder, 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 and rejoicing in murder. Celebrating it. And some of them celebrating it in the name of God. Come on. So you see how we lift all that up, but sometimes it's not just praying about that. He gives us a tool for an answer to that. 
And that's what we're praying about, this anointing on the prophet and the ministry and the anointing of the prophet. Now, here's the other thing. For a lot of people, this place of prayer, we wait for a spirit of prayer. It's kind of what I mentioned to you earlier on. Waiting for some sort of move in prayer. Well, I praise God for that. I love it when prayer comes on me, comes on our prayer group, and I just, oh, you just can't help but pray. And it's just, it's amazing. And you just, oh, you can just pray and pray and pray and not even know that you, that you had any time spent at all. It's wonderful. But most of the church is waiting for that. But not so with us. For the first time, maybe since the beginning of the church age, I don't know, but certainly for the first time in a century or two, we have people who are trained in faith enough to on purpose do what the Bible says, on purpose get dip down into our spirit and connect with faith, by faith, with the grace of God. Connect by faith to the spirit of God. Connect by faith and press in because we believe we have received the love of God. We can pray with compassion, not because just, just waiting for compassion to move on us, but because compassion has been shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Ghost. And I expect that when I pray in the Holy Ghost, the compassion of God is engaged and I'm expecting an outcome. Hallelujah. Set my faith in Jesus' name. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holden, you come up in case some of you didn't meet Holden last night. Holden is our um, ministry prayer coordinator. He does a lot of work for us at KCM and EMIC. He does a wonderful job. But I noticed on him right away, early on, back when he was still at ORU, I met him when he was there. He invited me as he was head of the, in fact, is Dexter Sullivan here today? Dexter, come up here, run. Come and run and look who's here. Wow. Look who's here. Come here, come here, come here fast. Oh, glory to God. Man of God, I'm so glad I got your text. So glad. So these two guys, this guy, Dexter, was over the prayer ministry and he just, God moved on him and just started a prayer move at Oral Roberts University, what, about eight years ago now? Something like that. Somewhere, 10 years ago. And so Dexter had asked me to come and I came up to ORU and prayed. And then he handed that over to Holden and Holden took it and ran with it. And there was just a sweeping move of God in prayer. The students were gathering to pray all different kinds of times coming in. Even during finals week, they came to pray. You say, well, that was a smart thing to do. I'm saying amen. But both of these guys, oh, I just, oh, I'm so, you should be up here between them, man. Woo! Yeah. Amen. Amen. Guys, let's pull this out of the way a little bit and y'all come stand up here with me. So we're going to pray. We've got about uh, six minutes and 54 seconds that we're going to pray and we're going to set our faith with us. Come on up here. Oh my goodness. Hallelujah. I could just fall out in the spirit right now just with these guys. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Most High. We bless the name of the Holy One. We bless the name of Jesus. We bless the name of Him who lived, who died, who suffered, who went to hell, who paid a price but was raised victorious over death, victorious over hell, victorious over principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, wicked spirits in heavenly places, victorious, victorious, and raised up and then ascended to the right hand of the Father to secure our place in heaven before him to secure our place at the council tables of the most high to secure our place of authority by the blood of the lamb hallelujah and then came and, and, and gave to the church his name gave to the church his authority and said go in my name go in my name go in my name so Lord here today we have we go 
in the name. We come before the throne in the name. We give praise to the name. We acknowledge the name of Jesus. And we lift up to you, Lord, first of all. We lift up to you on behalf of all men. Oh, God, the souls of all men. The souls of all men. The souls, Lord, the ones unborn, the ones that are born, the ones that are living, the ones that are dying. Lord, we lift them up to you. All the souls, Lord. God, Jesus died for every one of them. Jesus, Jesus suffered for every one of them. His blood was poured out for every one of them. And it's not right that the blood of Jesus be poured out in vain over any one soul. So we pray in the name of Jesus for the anointing of the Most High, the anointing and the equipping of, the, the, of God on the, the prophet's ministry here in Sacramento this weekend. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, for the supply of the Spirit, the supply of the Spirit. By faith we lay hold of the supply of the Spirit. By faith we lay hold of heaven's answers. By faith we lay hold of the authority and the will of God to be done in Sacramento, in California, in the United States, and in all the world. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, we see this text of praise, but thank you for praying. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the reach, the reach of the prophetic ministry into this region. We declare that the hope of the Spirit is reaching out and it's pulling in souls. We declare that bowels of mercy and compassion reach out into the four corners of this region and we declare souls are coming in the kingdom of God. We raise our level in the spirit to reach out, to reach out, to reach out. We reach, we reach with our spirit man in the name of Jesus. We reach for the souls. We reach for the redemption. We reach for the salvation. Today is the day of salvation and we reach in the name of Jesus. We seize those souls to come in. Come in, come in, come in. Call in the name of Jesus. Call in the name of Jesus. A clarion call in the spirit realm. The calls are realm, causing them to come out of darkness into marvelous light. We release bowels of mercy. We release the spirit of compassion to call those that are lost into the light, into the light of God, into the now of God. Let it be so in the name of Jesus. Wherefore God also highly exalted him, giving him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth till every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father in the name of Jesus. And Father, right now, we thank you for utterance. We thank you for utterance, strong utterance that pierces the hearts and the minds of every man, that breaks the blinders that have blinded the hearts and that have blinded the minds, that that darkness breaks right now in the name of Jesus, and that the anointing that flows through the utterance of Brother Copeland, that the anointing that flows through the utterance of Brother Savelle, that the anointing will pierce and give sight to the blind, that it will cause deaf ears to hear, and that it will cause people to repent, that it will cause people to repent and turn their hearts towards the Father, to turn their hearts towards the Father and see things the way that you see them, God, to see things the way that you see them, God. And we thank you for the anointing that removes the burdens and destroys the yokes. The anointing that removes the burdens and destroys the yokes. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus 
I thank you, Lord, as Brother Copeland preaches about the power of the Spirit within us, about the power of God within us, Lord, not only do we hear, not only do we learn, but by the grace of God, we become. By the grace of God, the power of God is released. By the grace of God, the power of God is magnified. By the grace of God, the power of God is, is multiplied in the church. Hallelujah. And because, Lord, your word says that the word is like a hammer and it breaks the rock. Thank you, Lord. The word breaks the rock. The breaks the rock, the hold, the strongholds, the word. And he delivered them by the word, by his word. Give praise to God. Hallelujah.